Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And we have an amazing update from uh, Harley Schlanger. What's amazing to me, uh, Harley, we talked about this before the show, and I belong to the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. We have lawsuits right now against Obamacare. And there's a lot of disinformation. The regular, I call the cartoon news network, CNN, the false or faux, F-A-U-X news network or Fox. The worst of all, the vomit network, I call them, the MSNBC, uh, literally it's like a dog vomiting on your television screen. It's, that's how bad it is. None of these, including the so-called spokespeople from either the Republican or Democratic Party, are getting the proper spin on what's really going on with Obamacare. And you highlighted it very well. I want to expand on that, but lay out what you, you see is going on because the Roosh Foundation and what I do is to go to higher ground and call it exactly what it is now. It's not a government takeover of health care. It's not, number one. It is the corporate degradation of health care with full permission by the government, and it's to enslave the health professionals and destroy the quality of health care and dental care in this country. It is a form of soft kill genocide is what it really is. Well, and it's also a bailout of insurance companies. Exactly. Like, as you say, all, let's, it's let's all of those things that you know, start off from, from what it really is instead of what the yeah. both parties want to spin and say it is, which, by the way, both of them are way off the mark. If this is target practice, they would be sent home and say, I'm sorry, you really don't shouldn't operate a gun because you'll, you'll, you'll shoot yourself in the foot. Well, well, let's start from the higher standpoint because I've actually done a series of presentations in the last couple of weeks uh, where people have asked me to come and talk about why is it that the American people seem so passive or so gullible, where you can whip people up on what really, in the grand scheme of things, is a relatively small uh, injustice, namely the situation in Nevada. But when you have a president who routinely lies, who is promoting policies that are leading us to the brink of war against Russia and China, who's pushed through a health care policy, which, as you say, is destroying the medical profession, including hospitals, while uh, convincing people that less is better for their health care. And by less is better, I don't mean unne- getting rid of unnecessary surgeries. I mean they're basically not going to pay for what you need. Uh, so why is it, someone asked me to come and give some presentations, why is it that the American people don't seem to get it? And... There are two aspects. The simple one is the one you alluded to, which is the way the media is covered. Right. It's controlled, I should say. You have a media in the United States which literally would make Joseph Goebbels envious. The <laughs> yeah. lying and the distortion from left to right, right to left, it doesn't matter. They lie on virtually everything. Because yeah. here's a perfect example. The current government in Ukraine, to anyone who knows anything about international politics, is an illegal government that was imposed by a coup run by the United States and uh, with some backup from NATO. And this government uh, issued a decree that the pro-Russian militias in the eastern part of the country have to disarm. But the pro-government militias who were involved in pulling the coup, who don't represent the people of Ukraine, that represent special, narrow interests, including Ukrainian nationalists who are Nazis, don't have to disarm. And then this militia group of pro-government or government-controlled Nazis went in and shot and killed five people at a checkpoint who were armed with baseball bats. And the initial coverage on all the U.S. media was that there was a shootout at that place, and that's why people were killed. A shootout with a baseball bat. What do they do? Aim the that's right. <laughs> bat, bat at them and go bang, bang? Ready, now, aim, the, swing. <laughs> by the way, at least the uh, the pro-Russian uh, militia in these big cities have said, hell no, we're not going to put down our arms because we don't see the coup people, which were ratified, by the way, the United As States legitimate government. governments, exactly. And the illegitimate government, they're not going to put their arms down. So until there's a, uh, a re-election and they remove the Nazis and the sector right party and the Maidan party, I don't think in your wildest dreams you're going to get people in Kirkov and uh, Donetsk to give up their arms. I think that this is a, a fantasy. And, all, and by the way, Putin doesn't need to do anything. All he needs to do is sit there and have a Russian smile. And by the way, it's not a smile because he's drinking vodka, it's because he's playing chess and we're playing checkers. 
Well, now, here's the, the other thing on this eastern Ukraine thing, and I don't want to belabor the point, but I'm using this to get at this question of why Americans don't know what's hitting us. Right. The, at the same time this is going on, the United States has now committed an initial group of troops, 150 ground troops to Poland, with between five and 10,000 more to come. Now, here's the question. Who's threatening Poland? Why do we need U.S. troops in Poland? Number two, the Finnish government is being pressured to sign a, an agreement with NATO, which would not establish them as members, but bring them under NATO protection. Who's threatening Finland? They're saying the same thing for Sweden. Who's threatening Sweden? You know, this yeah. is not Joseph Stalin or Trotsky running the Red Army in Moscow. The, the Russians know very well if they tried to overrun <laughs> Poland or or Sweden that this would be a, there'd be a nuclear strike against them. And Putin's not suicidal. But right. why are Americans not even asking the question? What are our interests there? And then you get someone like McCain who says we should be prepared if necessary to send U.S. troops to Ukraine and confront the Russians. Now he was in a losing war in Vietnam. Why does he want to put us in another losing war? He's seen how we didn't win in Afghanistan or Iraq. We left many Americans dead and crippled and suffering uh, depression and post-traumatic stress syndrome. We destroyed our military. We wrecked our budget with the spending on these useless wars. And now he wants to go for a bigger war. Why is this guy not committed to an insane asylum? And well, it should be. here's the interesting be. thing. He claims he's criticizing the president for not being tough enough. He's actually creating the room for the president to take the insane positions that he's taking, the president's taking. Namely, that uh, we'll negotiate with Russia after the Russians disarm the pro-Russian militias in eastern Ukraine. Well, here's the question I have for Kerry. How, are the, how is the Russian government going to disarm these pro-Russian militia if they, since the Russians don't have troops in eastern Ukraine? Do you want their troops to go in to disarm them? I mean, it's so stupid. <clears throat> the people of eastern Ukraine, as you pointed out, fear the government in Kiev. And they fear the right sector, who are people who swear allegiance to a man named Dmitry Yadosh, who fought on behalf of Chechen terrorists against Russia. The same Chechen terrorists who set off a bomb at our uh, Boston Marathon. And now we're saying that these armed gangs of the right sector, run by Yadosh, who was with the al-Qaeda forces against Russia, this is our ally, and he should not disarm, but that the people trying to defend themselves against his forces should disarm. This makes absolutely no sense in any universe. It's crazy, isn't it? it? And and the thing is, it's so twisted and it's so in your face. It's so like, and you, if you think about it a bit, you say they have a lot of nerve, even proposing this. Well, you know, Doctor Deagle, if the American people had this reported accurately to them, I think the people who were marching around in Nevada with guns should organize with the rest of the country to go to Washington and have a, a 10 million person march demanding that Obama step down immediately because he's threatening to incinerate this nation in a nuclear war over what? Defending some Nazis? Obviously that's not the reason he's doing this. No. It's the, no. It's the financial crash of the West and the desire to bring the Russians and the Chinese in on it so there's no safe haven, there's no part of the world that's no not place to be run. brought down by this crash. Exactly. No place to run, in other words. Yeah. And so if the American people knew that, there'd be no support for this war, just as there was no support for us to bomb Syria when we were only talking about sending some missiles. Yeah. Which are phony, by the way. These missiles were staged specifically to bring us into a f another false conflict. Exactly. Unbelievable. The usurper in chief, I call it the abomination that's trying to desolate us, is operating right now in the White House. He needs to be removed. Oh, because you're dead. Yeah. <clears throat> All those things he'll liberate us from.
lots, lots of topics to go over. Um, this uh, segment, I want, I want you to concentrate on the next issue, which is where the inappropriate. Uh, I can hear you breathing here. I hope you, it means you still have a pulse, probably too. <laughs> but I, I think that it's really amazing, Harley, how the media tries to constantly script what people are even able to get that really should be top news here. What you just mentioned on the break uh, is that all of these former leaders are saying, what is Obama doing? Is he out of his mind? Does he really want to start a war? Does he want to crash the German and European economy? Is he trying to bring about worldwide, not just you know a first flick or taste of depression, but a full force, death by millions monthly depression? That's where we're going, and and uh, I don't think the people grasp just how close we are to the edge of a real catastrophe here. Well, I, as I was telling you, there were a series of uh, articles in the German press uh, reporting on leading German uh, political figures who are opposing what the U.S. is doing. And in fact, this is pretty much widespread in Germany. That is, it's... Uh, although Merkel is saying that she's going to continue to support the the uh, Obama policy, they have done nothing yet in terms of sanctions. Now, all of a sudden, you see Helmut Schmidt, who you may remember was the chancellor in the late 70s, early 80s, during right. the height of the Cold War. He was a very strong American ally. Then Helmut Kohl, who replaced him, who was the... Uh, chairman or the, the chancellor of Germany during the fall of the wall who worked very closely with the West to make sure that that happened peacefully. Then Gerhard Schroeder, who replaced Kohl, who was another pro-American chancellor. Now, all three of these guys who are pro-American, including the ones who served during the Cold War, are all saying that what's being done by Obama and NATO is crazy. And this is not covered in the U.S. Former French President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, former German Foreign Minister uh, Hans-Dietrich Genscher, who was the Foreign Minister during most of the time that from Reagan up to uh, Bush Jr., all of them have come out and said, we need to negotiate. Let's back off. And so what does Kerry do? Kerry goes there flapping his jaw, which is probably a dangerous weapon, uh, yeah. flapping his jaw, threatening the Russians. Uh, the, the foreign minister of Russia, his counterpart, says, look, we just signed an agreement which said that all militia should be disarmed. What about the right sector, the Nazi militia in Kiev? And Kerry said, well, since they're part of the government now, it's up to the government to decide whether they should be disarmed or not. Well, now, the, the fact is, the right <laughs> sector ran the coup. So, of course, the government's not going to disarm them because they control the government. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like accessing left hand. And this could be a mime, you know. Left hand, do we want to attack the right hand? And left hand says, no, that's part of the same body. You'd be silly yeah. to attack the right hand. Why would you do that? So, uh, I, it, it's, I, uh, and all of these things, if they were reported honestly on the US, in the U.S. media... Americans would be scratching their heads saying, what are we doing? Why is this happening? Why are we sending troops to Poland, two combat-ready troops, divisions? Why are we sending, uh, violating long-term agreements with the Russians about our ships in the Black Sea? This is provocative. Suppose the Russians posted destroyers uh, in, uh, uh, what's the city across from Brownsville, Texas? Um, is escaping my, my uh, Matamoros. You know, if the Russians use the port of Mar Matamoros to put in uh, missile launching ships, <laughs> this is this is so bizarre. And yet, it most is. Americans don't know about it, so they don't protest it. Well, they don't understand that what's going on now are circumstances that, are in many ways, are more ominous than those that started off World War One and Two. And uh, what I see happening is the economic war warning signs geopolitical warning signs we have parties like like putin who's playing chess here trying to do anything but go to war yeah and you know what 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 does the u.s say about putin that he's a dictator well you know i think at this point if you look at the polls in russia you'll find that putin is has about three times the popularity rating as obama well, so, uh, well how can you how can you be popular when even in their twisted rating, 67% of the U.S. population thinks that Obama 
and the U.S. government are liars. Obama is a liar. In actual fact, it's more like 98%, but the rest of the people are probably brain dead that, that don't understand that lying puts your nation in danger because you can't be trusted with your foreign allies or enemies. Yeah, so... You know, this is why this question of the media control is so important, although many people use that as an excuse to say, well, you can't do anything. And, and, you know, it's ironic. People who listen to your program and know better, know the media is lying, still say, well, you can't do anything because the media lies, even though they listen to your program. I don't believe it. Like we're that way, I... why don't you just get everybody you know to listen to this program? Exactly. And, then, in fact, if you actually listen to the... the uh analysis of how many people are listening the the size of the audience is bigger than most network television shows now so uh, i think we need to kind of uh, as they say put your big boy pants on and realize we are the media we're the only ones that are actually citizen broadcasters telling the truth we're the only organizations like yours and ours that are out here just not being paid we're actually some people do somebody pay you know we pay to be on the air five figures monthly and we do this because we know that this is the final battle. If we don't have the hearts and minds of people on side, and we're not just talking about the death of America, we're talking about the death of the human civilization on this planet. Because the globalists here are not satisfied with just grabbing all the money, all the power. They want mega death. They want omnicide. They want a mass kill of the human race. Well, let me give you the latest on this, because I just heard that in a recent discussion, the CNN mogul Ted Turner made a proposal. He said the whole world should pass legislation making it illegal to have more than one child per family. This was the Chinese uh, genocide model that was implemented under Mao Zedong to reduce population. And what Turner said is that if we did this within five decades, the world population would be down to a sustainable two billion. Now, Turner was at a so-called billionaire's club meeting not that long ago with fellow genocidalist Bill Gates, right. Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, and these are people who are shaping the ideas that are in the media. Now, when right. LaRouche says there are genocidalists out there that want to reduce the world's population, they say, oh, that's conspiracy theory, he's a crack. Even though they're, they're publicly saying it, radiant public media, things like the TED conferences and so on, and... And I dug up something else. I've got to throw this at you, a curveball. I was asked okay. yesterday to do research for Deborah Tavares and Jeff Rents, and a big uh, media spot that was put on by uh, Alex Jones. He reviewed some articles. And when we come back, I'm going to expand on this because it's a really big deal, and they did get some real facts out here. But I'm going to expand on it and clarify it. And it is very, very serious. It's dealing with vaccines that specifically have... Fash viruses that carry DNA to destroy brain receptors and destroy the human mind. Well, I'll expand in hour number three, but I just want to mention here this this uh, article, which I'm going to post up on the Nutramedical Report uh, show on Nutramedical.com. Uh, it really does show that they have fash viruses that can rewire your brain. But the viruses aren't put out in the wild. They have to be injected. So if you don't get vaccines, no problem. But if you do, you run the risk, like these women are getting anti-NMDA receptor antibodies and destroying their brains or ending up in the ICU or dying. Uh, these you know, people have to understand, when you have people like Bill Gates that releases of, you know, mosquitoes that can actually vaccinate you or food, they've actually funded research to make genetically modified food that will actually vaccinate you when you eat the food. These people are hell-bent, literally hell, H-E-L-L, bent, on control and calling the human herd a population. And people think that, no, no, this is just a conspiracy theory. They need a good hard slap in the face, physically, not just intellectually, because it's not okay for someone else to maintain this level of ignorance in the face of something this deadly and destructive. It's dangerous. And that's why regular media, which I don't consider the media anymore, the regular media, the newstainment, the brain damaging media, they're dangerous to the body public of America. Organizations like LaRouche and our network here, Genesis, and our pro programs like my show, Alex Jones Show, etc., Rents Network, we're literally the antidote. And without this antidote, civilization is doomed. It really is doomed because a lot of people are just not getting the facts. They don't understand that these leaders from Germany and Europe are looking at our leader, our current idiot in chief, and say, what are you doing? You're such a novice, you're going to start World War III. 
And they look at it and they just don't understand whether, where was America. Do they have the America that was there when the wall fell? When, uh, you know, do they have the America of the Second World War? No. What do we have right now? We've got a joke. We've got a very deadly satanic joke, too. So, Harley, please continue. Well, I think the, this is where you, you raise the point that people tend to reject these things as conspiracy theories. Well, what do you think happens when some of the most influential, wealthy people, like Oprah Winfrey, like mm -hmm. Ted Turner, get together with someone like Bill Gates, who's one of the richest men in the world, who basically has his hand in, in everybody's pocket through uh, his uh, Microsoft company. What do you think they're talking about when they lay out plans to spend billions of dollars to promote these ideas, and then they have access to President Obama? They work with the international organizations tied to the Queen of England, who's a leading promoter of um, wiping out the world's population. And then you talk about conspiracies. Well, how did Hitler come to power? There was a conspiracy to put him in power that included Prescott Bush, the father of George Herbert Walker Bush and the grandfather of George W. Bush. Right. And this is documented. This is not made up. The U.S. government, the attorney general, in the fall of 1942, seized a bank under the Trading with the Enemy Act, a bank called Union Bank Corp. of New York. Uh, we wrote about this years ago because we found the documents. Kevin Phillips, the well-known historian and writer, has, has covered this. What happened is that they shut down a bank because it was continuing to fund Hitler, even as we were fighting the Nazis in North Africa. So... The thing that's interesting is that when you see the records, it didn't start in 1942. It goes back to 1933. They were funding Hitler as he was seizing power and moving to become a dictator. Now, what was it that they had in common with Hitler? I mean, Hitler was really just an operative for these guys. People like Averill Harriman and the Bush family, Prescott Bush, were promoters of the idea of reducing population. And the way they did it was through funding so-called scientific research in eugenics. Now, eugenics is a fraud, but it's believed by some people, the idea of a racial science, that you can measure brain sizes, foot sizes, other organ sizes, to determine whether some people are more genetically adaptable than others. And the work that was being done in the 20s in the United States was done to show that black populations, Mediterranean populations like Italians and Spaniards and Greeks, uh, Jewish populations, the Mexican populations, that these were all genetically inferior. That was being reported and studied and discussed in the United States in the 1920s and early 30s, before right. Hitler came to power in Germany. Yeah. Now, Hitler's so-called race science owed a debt to what was being done by these American institutions. And in fact, in 1934, Ernst Rudin, who was Hitler's minister of race, came to New York City to get an award from the Harriman family, and he said, how I wish we were free in Germany to do what you're doing in the United States. So this connection of the Bush family with Hitler was not a conspiracy, it was what they call business as usual because they actually believe that the world would be better off if you reduced non-white populations. Now, this is exactly what the Queen of England is saying, and the Queen presides over something called the Commonwealth. Many of the countries of the Commonwealth have poor black and brown populations that were colonies until after World War II, and after they ceased to be actual colonies, they became financial colonies, that is, totally controlled, raw materials and everything else, by the City of London financial system. And that's why they have higher death rates. That's why they never had clean water programs instituted, why they never had uh, nuclear power plants or even coal-fired plants in some of these areas, because of the willingness of the British Empire to kill off the population in their colonies and just keep enough people there to mine the raw materials and ship them to the mother country. So when we talk about Obamacare and say that it has its origins from the Nazis, 
we've actually shown the documents, including what Justice Jackson, Robert Jackson, who was a U.S. Supreme Court justice, who was the presiding judge in Nuremberg, Germany, after World War II in the Nazi trials. And Judge Jackson uh, accepted the argument and said this was, in fact, the right argument, that the massive slaughter in the death camps of Germany began with the decision of the Hitler regime that there were such a thing as useless eaters, and that right. the initial euthanasia was carried out by the German doctors, the so-called right. doctors. 275,000 disabled people, Down syndrome people, people with, uh, with uh, uh, all kinds of birth defects, just from a club foot to uh, a child that has fragile X syndrome, Down syndrome. They were euthanized, 275,000 before the first uh, Jew, the first gypsy, the first black, the first homosexual was euthanized in the death camps. And what's important <clears throat> is the argument used to justify it was that they're never going to have a normal life where they can be productive for the Reich. And therefore, the government should not only not spend money on them, but should do nothing to allow them to continue to live. Right, now, in other words, they, they would have value added in every individual. From Obamacare. Right. There are certain people who it just costs too much to keep alive. So let's if we can convince them to voluntarily kill themselves, then you don't have the stigma of a Nazi government sending people to death. But when you take someone who's very sick and whose family is facing increased medical expenses, uh, because anyone who thinks your medical costs have been eliminated by Obamacare uh, <laughs> need, needs to do a little bit of reading. you got a but, bridge for them on the moon, right? You go to a family where an elderly relative is very sick and needs surgery, and you get the doctor to say, look, he's not going to make it. It's going to cost a lot. Even if he does make it, he'll never have the same quality of life. And what's driving that? Cost reduction. Save money. And what do they have to save money for? So we can fund regime change operations. Right, exactly. So in other words, granny's going to die because we got to make a smart bomb to kill some guy in some foreign country like Afghanistan, to kill his two goats, to kill his children and his two wives, and knock down his mud hut and kill his camel. That's why Granny's got to die. That's the size of it. Pretty bad, isn't it? It makes you nauseated to actually... To, you know, when you say I'm an American, you can feel the kind of the retching sound in the back of your throat now with Obama's second term. I am so angry that this is happening. Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And uh, Harley, in this last segment, we want to talk about uh, Obama as a functionary of the British Empire. And of course, Lord Evil, I call him Evil Rothschild, sits down at morning tea at Greenwich Mean Time and determines the price of gold. They also determine the price of a human life. They determine the price of a civilization. They determine how to turn off the tap of credit and how to increase derivatives. As you mentioned before the show today, you mentioned there are even these derivative markets have actually taken over dental offices because young graduating dentists can't afford now to go into dentistry, so they join these giant groups, and they're now owned by derivatives-driven Owner, hedge, fund owners, corporate, yeah. hedge, fund, hedge fund owners, and these hedge funds are actually now running dental offices, and they're milking the Medicare, providing unnecessary services to people, the children, that would otherwise get no care. Instead, they get unnecessary braces and other things that aren't needed. Uh, milking paid the system by Medicaid. well. Paid by Medicaid, <clears throat> which, by the way, real necessary services aren't being given, but unnecessary ones that will pay are being milked like crazy, just like a goat in your, tied to your backyard. So all of this comes back to Obama. This man is literally a functionary of the British. He's literally a caretaker of the devolution and the dismantlement of the American Republic. And step by step, even the ability to worship, rather than just the ability to have, quote, a, even a faint shadow of religion. We see it with Hobby Lobby and Obamacare, where two of the major judges that he's appointed literally made statements of, well, just pay the penalty and uh, don't give them health care. I mean, where does he get off? Where do these judges get off actually operating from the bench? But Obama is just a front man for the British power structure of the city of London. I mean, this is, this, this is all he is. He is a boy. He's a boy in the White House is what he is. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, I think he was selected for his willingness to do whatever it took to get him in the White House. Right. And, you know, we're not, it's, it's not that we don't know that there are such kinds of things. I mean, everyone yeah. knows that you have uh, these, these kinds of, uh, I guess you would just call them ambitious people who will sell their soul to get ahead. Now, the question is whether or not he actually has a soul. But in the case of someone like Obama, he made it clear from the very beginning that he was for sale. And he made it clear to George Soros. In, in December 2007, Soros ran on a, uh, a special meeting of, of hedge fund operators and said, we need to put $30 million together for this guy. And that's how he got the jump coming out of the gate uh, against Hillary Clinton in 2008. Now, some people were deluded on the, on the left in the Democratic Party that Obama's anti-war, he's going to do something different than Bush and Cheney. And now we look at what he's done. He is a continuation of the Bush-Cheney policy, a total right. continuation. Which is why I, I say that the, the snake party, which is both Republicans and Democrats, and the party in power just happens to take over the job as the lower jaw, the biting part of the, of the mouthpiece of the so-called governing body by administrative fiat. There's no real representative government anymore. It's corporate representation of transnational corporations run by Earth Inc. and the Druidic Council sitting in London that basically says, yes, we shall kill 90% of humanity and they'll like it. They'll actually vote for it. That's what they're doing. And they give us disinformation. And that's what Obama is. And that's why he was given a Nobel Peace Prize before he did a damn thing in office. That's right. why the media still, the, the, the main media in this country, even though they report opposition to him, they still try to make him look good, which is kind of hard to do with a guy who's a, the deporter-in-chief, the killer-in-chief, and so on. So I think the important thing is that what we're doing, what, what I'm doing, what LaRouche Pack is doing, what Keisha Rogers is doing, is that we're saying what, what most people won't say. Impeach this guy before he kills you. And yeah. this is urgent for your listeners, because I've never talked to one of your listeners who agrees with anything Obama's doing. But I have gotten calls from a number of them who say, well, you can't get rid of him. And I keep telling them it's that attitude which ensures that he's going to stay in office until you're dead. And so, you know, the, this is to, to get to what I was saying at the beginning, when someone asked me, why are Americans putting up with this? It's because they're afraid of the implications of acknowledging that Obama really is as bad as he is. They're willing to complain about him all they want, but they're afraid to step forward and say, okay, I'll do what it takes to get him impeached. I'll call Congress. I'll yeah. make a nuisance of myself. I'm going to get my friends to call Congress. And if people don't do that, he's going to stay in office. And he's going well, to end I, up I'm, getting us into World War III. I, I'm very concerned that he's screwing things up so badly. I'm not even certain there will be a 20, 2016 election. Uh, I think that, the, that there's a very high probability, probably at the rate we're going, from somewhere between 60 and 80 percent plus, that we're going to have martial law by the time the 2016 election comes on, and there won't be a 2016 election. This may be our last president. So we're headed for that, and the point is that <clears throat> we're also in a situation where the military doesn't trust Obama. The Republicans dislike him, but they're using him for opportunistic reasons of winning the yeah, next that, election. That's really and stupid, the, because uh, it, it, the way he's closing the gate here, uh, including attacking uh, the conservative media. Uh, I don't know that there'll be, that even if we take over the House and the Senate, well, it'll be irrelevant because functionally Obama's making the Congress completely vestigial. Basically, it doesn't mean, means he has literally converted himself into an emperor. At the rate we're going by 2016, he may well be. Well, and the point is that the Democrats <laughs> who rightfully recognize him as a complete rejection of the better part of the democratic tradition, nevertheless are afraid to stand up and, and oppose him because they're afraid they'll be called racist. And this is something that my, my friend Ed Asner said not that long ago, and he was attacked yeah. for saying it, but he was absolutely right. Now, I think we need to be a little bit more bold about that than, than falling into this trap of continually this really worn idea of racism, racism. Look, we're not in the 1960s or 50s or 40s or 30s. You know, what country is going to elect a, a, a black attorney general and a black president and they still use a stupid moniker that we're racist? How, how ridiculous. 
We don't care what race they are. We want people that are are good people. That's what we're doing with Keisha Rogers' (laughs) campaign. And again, I'm asking your listeners to stop being spectators and complainers. Join our movement. Give me a call. Become part of our mobilization to throw Obama out of the White House. And you can call me at 800-922-2907. But that that number, that's the same number for... That's the same number for... Impeachment Central, isn't it? Or yes, that's that Impeachment admit? Central. Ah, okay. Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we got <laughs> lots of calls. Last week, no one called. Why? Did people suddenly decide Obama's good? Yeah. No, it's because a lot of people are just afraid to put themselves out there. Well, there are lots of you out there. There are more people who want him impeached than want him to stay in office. So make the call. Join our mobilization. It's 800-922-2907. And that way you can overcome this problem of just being a complainer and actually become part of a solution. Well, there's three consequences to not complaining and not doing something. First is that the dollar will be devalued probably 75% within the next year and a half at the rate Obama's going. The second thing is we're probably going to be involved in a very, very bad war where a lot of our young men and women will die. It means they'll probably have to start a draft. So it means your sons may actually be drafted to be sent off to dead, become uh, either die or come back mangled or mentally a uh, disaster zone. And the third consequence is, is America may trigger off a conflict that could accelerate to the point where we have a full thermonuclear, biological and chemical exchange and life in America will basically be for only, as I say, the living, if there's anybody surviving, will envy the dead. That's how bad it can get. So, you know, this is not a minor game here. We're talking about playing out the Bay of Pigs times a thousand and the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis is all over again, only now we're going to have missiles placed in Venezuela, Nicaragua, and uh, Cuba again, uh, literally in their back doorstep that can strike any American city within minutes. And, uh, and Putin doesn't want this. He knows that what he wants is a diversified economy. They're just starting to crawl out under his rule from the disaster 27 years ago of the fall of, of the Soviet Union. And... Uh, <laughs> Give us a call if you want to avoid World War III. Let's get Obama out. 800-922-2907. Call today. Don't wait. Yeah, I guess the, the, the tagline for it is, let's boot the rookie. Well, let's boot the fascist killer. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, the fascist he's been in there uh, killer. He's long enough that he's no longer a rookie. Exactly. I guess his uh, main statement of of glory is, I'm really good at killing people on the Tuesday morning Situation Room setting. And he actually did say that, didn't he? He really did. I I can't believe it. My skin crawls when I hear it. I can't believe it. All right. Talk to you next week. Amazing. Again, that number for Impeachment Central, 800-922-2907. Back in hour number two, hour three, Tex Mars comes back and we've got... Some shocking information for you. Stay tuned.